Good morning, friends. My name is John Hauerwas. I serve as a minister here at Skidaway Community Church. And on behalf of our congregation, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to worship with us today. You see me moving a little bit, hiding from the sun that's coming through, and that's one of the beauties of this time of year, is that as the sun shifts, uh, we can make all kinds of connections to what it means to live in the light of God's presence for us this day. It is uh, such a great pleasure for me to be here and worship with you. I know that I've already stated that and kind of hinted at it, but the reality is it brings me incredible joy to be here with you in God's house, to worship with you, to sing praises to God, to hear wonderful music and to participate in it, and to think about all the blessings that we have in our lives. I hope that this place brings you half as much joy as it does me. Uh, today, we have Consecration of Pledge Sunday, and we want you at the appropriate time, that's going to be during the last hymn, if you've already filled out a pledge card for the coming year, to simply bring it forward and place it in this basket that's here on the communion table. If you don't have a pledge card or forgot to fill one out and you wish to do so, we invite you to join us after worship today over in Liston Hall, where we're going to have a stewardship luncheon. Everyone is invited, members of our church, friends, relatives, guests. We hope that everyone will come and join us for this celebratory meal. And we give thanks not only for the stewardship committee, but also for the fellowship committee in helping to put this together. We are also really grateful today to have the opportunity to welcome the shared bell choir. It is a bell choir that is a labor of love. It is a work of unity between two congregations here on the island, SCC, of course, and also Messiah Lutheran here on the island. The director of our shared bell choir is um, uh, Valerie, and uh, we're so grateful for her, or, I'm sorry, Shirley, Shirley Newhart, and we're so grateful for her many talents and the ways in which she leads and oversees this joint effort. Today, I'm going to be talking a lot about unity and what that means from a Christian perspective as we dive into Romans. And uh, we want to give thanks for this opportunity as our churches come together to offer something that's really meaningful and spiritually enriching, that we recognize God's presence and the way that God's Spirit is moving among us. Friends, let us still our hearts and minds, let us prepare ourselves to worship the living God. Good morning. Uh, my name is John Evans, and I am the litur liturgist for this morning's service. Would you please join with me in the responsive call to worship? You who are many, 
are transformed to become one in Christ. We, who are many, are called to worship God, the three in one, let us worship God. Set to the same tune as the church's one foundation, the text for our opening hymn was written by David Gambrell in 2009 in honor of the 500th anniversary of John Calvin's birth. This hymn reflects on the many blessings we receive from God and our response and gratitude. Please rise in body or in spirit and let us join in praising the great God of every blessing as we sing this hymn of thanksgiving. That's hymn number 694. For those worshiping at home, we wish to share with you the Beast of Christ. For those worshiping with us in person, we encourage you to share the peace of Christ with those seated near you. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you.
Wow, we have a lot of children up here. I'm more worried about the ones to my left than I am the ones to my right. Uh, I should be, especially with Sue and Jane up here. Um, and we have some guests, I see. Hudson and Harlan, is that correct? I'm envious of Harlan's hair, especially as the temperatures get colder. So I have a little dish here. I'm going to pass some stuff out, okay? S some money. You know, everybody like money? Jane, do you like money? Sure How about you, Alice? Yes. Yeah, okay. You know, interestingly enough, too, on our money, I always like to be reminded that all of our money in America says, in God we trust, okay? So, Nate, how would you like $5? Okay. How about that? Yeah, thank you. You want a dollar, Hudson? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. You want a dollar? Okay. Harlan, I don't want you to put this in your mouth. Are you good? Okay. You got a thumb. Alice? Thank you. Jane? Dave? Thank you. Oh, my good friend Sue. Double nickels, girl. Now, everybody got a little money. Everybody happy? Yeah? Okay, well, well, Nate, looks like you got the most. How does that make you feel? Good. Good? Makes you feel good? Okay. Ella Scott, you feeling all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Jane, Alice, you guys good? You good? Quarter? Probably still go to the bubble gum machine with that. And Sue, you got two nickels. How are you feeling, girl? That's all I got was a nickel. You got two nickels. Well, how come all I got was two nickels? Everybody else got more. Well, I don't, I don't know. But you, had, you didn't have two nickels when you dropped, walked up here. No. No, I didn't. I'm no. happy. No, okay. You're happy. There you go. Well, Nate, you know, my good friend Sue here only got two nickels. You got a five. Do you know what's expected of those who get more? To, to maybe give more, right? Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Ella Scott, you understand that? You got a lot more. Yours was worth three times, four times more than the quarters. So do those who receive more or look to give more. That makes sense? Okay. Well, let's have a quick prayer. Are you okay with double nickels? Yes. Okay. I hear you, Harlan. Preach, boy. There you go. Heavenly Father, thank you for this joy. Thank you for the participants up here and let them remind us all that we're really blessed beyond measure because you've given us so much. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Don't you all wish you would come forward for the children's message today? Um, we're going to transition now to a moment for ministry. Oh, yeah. Good morning. As you can see, the title says annual budget. And luckily for me, we don't have it completed yet, so I don't have to go into all the gory detail. We can do that later. Certainly at the annual meeting, there'll be a lot of discussion. But the budget not yet put together is mostly done on the expense side. And as you've learned earlier, we are uh, basically replacing two part-time folks with two full-time folks as part of our growth plan for the future. So this is stewardship, which is just what Alan talked about. And we have many revenue sources, but the big one is the card you got in the mail, or didn't in some cases, and there's more that will be available over at lunch. 
But in addition to pledges, just a quick highlight, we have other income sources. Uh, investment income, which has been better these days. We have uh, the ability to fund part of the pastor's housing allowance from an account we have. The Brown Foundation, some of you have heard about, this is a perpetual gift to the church, which is planned giving in spades. The latest check we got from the foundation, which goes right into our income need, $44,000. And if you price that out as equivalent assets that we might have, that comes out to about $900,000 worth of value. And so we'll be getting that check in perpetuity. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down, and you'll hear more about planned giving later. We can switch to the next slide, please. This giving table shows the pledges for 2024. And you've heard me say many times in the past, I'm amazed at the average giving of our members, but also the median giving. Sometimes a big number on the upside can distort the median gift, but even that is a very solid number. And that's important, of course, to filling in as much as we can of the income requirement for the upcoming budget. But you've also heard me say over the years that to me giving is in thanks and praise to God. And all that we have and are is a gift from God. However, this year because of the budget, I usually don't talk about giving to a budget, but this year uh, it would be useful and for the next few years it certainly will be to support the growth plan. Lastly, we have chicken salad chick for lunch. You're gonna get a heavy enough meal on Thursday, presumably. So please join us and thank you for your support of this wonderful church. Would you please pray with me? Gracious God, though you are known by many names and depicted in many ways, we know you most fully in Jesus Christ, our Messiah, your Son. We thank you for forming us into the church, the body of Christ in the world. Help us to live as he taught us, loving you, loving neighbor, unified in Christ, using our varied gifts and skills in the service of ministry until all things are transformed into what is good and acceptable and perfect. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. And together let us offer the prayer that Christ taught us, saying in one voice, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is filled with moving poetry about God's costly grace and grave's shattered door. Please remain seated and let us sing together.
Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth, confident in this ever gracious, never failing help. We come before the Lord, confessing our sin and seeking forgiveness. Please join me in the unison prayer for forgiveness. Merciful God, we confess that we conformed our lives to the ways of the world and not the ways of your kingdom. We think of ourselves too highly and regard others as lowly. We exalt possessions and power when you alone are to be exalted. We let conflicts prevail over grace and divisions over harmony. Have mercy on us, we pray. Forgive and transform us that we may be holy and acceptable to you, discerning and doing your will. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Hear the good news. The steadfast love of the Lord never ends. When we call out to God, God answers. God saves us with a strong and outstretched hand. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and help to live in grace. Amen. Sadly for us, but with great joy in the promise of the resurrection, our congregation has recently said farewell to two of our beloved members. One of those, Grace Walter, who entered eternal life, will be remembered in a worship service here in our sanctuary on Saturday, December the 14th at 10 a.m. And then sadly, we have also said farewell to Mary Alice Cavett, whose service will be held here in the sanctuary on Monday, December the 2nd at 11 a.m. We hope that you can come and pay tribute to these two beautiful women, their legacy and their memory. As we remember them, their families, and the many lives that they have touched, let us also turn to God, remembering the many needs of our world. Would you please bow your heads with me and let us pray. Listening God, hear now these prayers both spoken and silent, for peace where there is conflict, for food where there is hunger, for hope where there is despair, For health where there is sickness. For faith where there is fear. For life where there is death. We pray for our church community and for the success of our stewardship efforts that we may effectively meet the needs of your church. We thank you for the gift of the church and for the varied gifts and perspectives you place among us. Help us to welcome the diversity of your design in ways that enlarge our witness in the world. We thank you especially for Jesus Christ, who has called us to be his body in the world, who conquers all that would defeat us, who gives us new life, and in whose name we pray, we pray silently. And with prayers of thanksgiving for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do, most gracious God, we profess that this day and always we seek to offer our lives to you. Guide our steps in Christ's name. Amen.
The Apostle Paul encourages us, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. In loving service to this loving Lord, we now return to God a portion of the bounty God has provided. Offering plates may be found at both uh, entrances to the sanctuary and online giving is available. Boy, talk about a tough act to follow. Woo. Please uh, bow your heads and let us pray together. Uh, let us pray, Lord, by the power of your spirit, give us your words of life, that our faith may increase and our hearts be made whole. Amen. The first lesson this morning is from Psalm 150. Verses 1 through 6, found on page 583 of the Old Testament section of your Bible. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from Paul's letter to the Romans. In the 12th chapter, I invite you now to hear the word of God. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, on the basis of God's mercy to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable act of worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say that everyone among you ought not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in faith. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Pursue hospitality for strangers. 
Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be arrogant, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. And if it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I was thinking about the message for today and I was zeroing in on this concept of conformity, I wondered whether it is true that conformity is a bad thing or whether it is a good thing. And I invite you to think about that for just a moment. You know, when we're talking to the children in our lives, especially as they start to age and go into middle school and the high school years, and you've all probably heard the saying, well, birds of a feather, they flock together. The idea is be really careful who your friends are because they're going to influence you. They're going to have a certain amount of authority in your life, and you want to be careful whose different instruction and, and whose guidance you're listening to because you don't want to conform your life to the wrong kinds of ways and concepts and ideas and styles of being. So we are concerned about the kind of conformity in our lives. We said earlier during our prayer for confession. This prayer that ultimately leads to our forgiveness that we are sorry, O oh God, for being a little too conforming with the ways of the world. So this tells me that it's not just a, an issue for middle schoolers and high schoolers among us. Because each of us in our own journeys, we reach some point along the way where we realize Am I conforming to the values of this world, the values all around me, values that at times may not be very good values for upholding myself as a person or the greater, grander world around us? We're not truly living as disciples of, of Jesus if we're conforming our lives to this world around us. And we know how easy it is to slip in to that kind of being. Because we have this very grand society around us. If we are to be honest with ourselves, Western society and specifically North American and even beyond that, American society and values predominate on this earth. And if we think that we're not influenced by the world around us and the messages that we receive, for better, yes, but, but also for worse, then we're kidding ourselves, aren't we? And what is the greater, grander value that we see in the world around us? Well, we're supposed to go and pursue a career that's going to make us a lot of money, right? And we're supposed to make sure that we invest that money wisely and that we store it in bigger and bigger barns, to use a metaphor from the Bible. And then at the end of the day, we are to sit back and say, look at how successful we have been. Look at how wonderful our life has been. Look at all the things that we have enjoyed. And then, well, that's it, isn't it? God tells us that we are to store up our treasures in heaven. And this is not a minister shaking his finger at everyone in this room thinking that I'm exempt from all of this. I know far, far better than that because every person in this room is blessed beyond imagination. That includes me and my family. These messages of Scripture, they're not just for you, they're for all of us. And if we are to be honest, they're not just for us, but they are for the greater world that so many of us often slip into conforming into, even though we would rather not admit that, 
even though sometimes it happens gradually and slowly and even at times without our knowledge or consent, it's simply what we see all around us and we buy into it day in and day out. And each time that we buy into it, we learn that we are no longer conforming just a little bit at a time to the message and discipleship of Jesus Christ. Our second lesson today from Romans chapter 12 reminds us that we are to be conformed not to the ways of the world, but instead that we are to conform our lives to the ways of Jesus. And then the Apostle Paul goes on to give us all kinds of different examples about how we are meant to live. Forgiving other people, seeking the best interest of others, being generous. And we, as Christian disciples... We've come into this place and we, we've heard all of these messages before. This is not news to us. But if we were able to grasp these messages and to live by them once and for all after hearing just one sermon or just one message from Scripture or just one moving anthem from our choir or our bell choir, then, well, we could just dust our hands off and say we might as well go home. We've got this thing figured out and wrapped up. We've put a bow on it. All is well. But if you're anything like me, then you need a little bit of work. You could use a little polishing and shining sometimes. You can just blow the dust off and say, have, have you looked right there, right underneath that cobweb to that certain portion of your life? How are you doing there? Could you use a little dusting and shining this morning? I was incredibly moved by the time with young disciples and the ways in which the children were able to express what they were thinking, sometimes a little more freely, sometimes a bit more guardedly. I would be so interested to hear what Ella Scott's real answer is later when Nate received $5 and she only received one. And she said, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. You know, this is polite company, isn't it? But we compare ourselves to one another. We are trying to see what the, the Joneses are up to. No uh, intention here of calling out any family that we know and love. We're always looking at our neighbors and what they have, the kind of lifestyle that they're living into. And with social media, well, we see every vacation picture, every smile, every beautiful meal. Every family moment, we're constantly reminded of the comparisons between one another. But at the end of the day, if we're truly honest with one another, we are each blessed beyond measure. And as Alan said so well, to those whom much is given, much is expected. You know this. I know this. This is one of the reasons why I have devoted my life to the ministry of Jesus Christ because I'm grateful. I'm grateful for all that I have and for all that God has given me. And I wish that I could give more monetarily, but what I am not able to do in that regard sometimes, well, maybe I'll just work a little later into the night. And maybe I can show what God has done for me through some gift perhaps that God has made possible in my life. It's more than just finances that we're talking about now, isn't it? It is the gift of our very lives. And God knows our intention. God knows our heart. God knows if, if we are giving reluctantly. God wants us to be joyful in our giving. God wants us to feel alive with the Holy Spirit that is flowing through us and through our greater community. And when we gather in this place and see God's work among us, we can't help but smile. 
and to be glad to be in this journey with one another. That's what our celebratory meal is really all about. As I draw to a close this morning, I want to remind you of some of our themes that we've been drawing upon this stewardship season. In the first week, you will recall that we had Mission Aviation Fellowship and a representative that came and, and witnessed to us about the good work that they are doing around the world. We were reminded that God's ministry is more than just about us. It is also about others who need God's care and love and support. Last week, I mentioned to you that we were in the midst of thinking about our personnel and specifically, as Milo mentioned, the two staff positions that are going from part-time to full-time. And I said, I can't tell you too much about that. But you know, I called a special meeting of our session this past Thursday. And I am really excited to tell you that our session, your leadership body, has just welcomed two new full-time staff members to our staff team. They're going to be joining us February the 17th, one serving as our music director and one serving as our communication and outreach director, working not only in our main office, but also offering musical gifts with us here in worship. The gift of song and voice, the gift of guitar, the gift of working with children and youth. We have so much for which to be thankful and all of this is possible because we've taken a leap of faith. We chose not to do things the way that we have always done them. And to expect a different result. But instead we have said, God, this is what we wish to be as your people. Help us to live into your vision for our shared community. And God said, uh, okay, I can help you out with that, but you're going to need to take some risks. And we said, that sounds kind of scary. And God said, I know. And we said, but we're not so sure that we want to take risks. We are sensible, reasonable people, God. And God said, I know. And God said, I'm not going to give up on what you are doing in your ministry here, and I'm not going to give up on your vision. And I mean it, I want you to live in to that vision. And we said, that sounds scary. And God said, I know. And finally, we relented. And we said, God, if this is your will among us, then help us to do as you have asked. And so we're in a season of taking some risks and taking a leap of faith even when it feels scary knowing that God is there to catch us and that God wants us to succeed and that when we live into God's vision for our lives, the result will be very, very good. Today we're highlighting not only the breadth of this entire stewardship campaign, but we are focusing specifically on the unity that we find in Christ, not by conforming to the ways of the world, but by conforming to what God has planned for us. And when we do that, we see unity in our midst. And just very briefly, that is demonstrated by these congregations that are coming together today, Skidaway Community Church and Messiah Lutheran. This is what it looks like when we conform our ideals to what God's plans and intentions are for our shared ministry. We don't just flock together because we are common birds, but instead conforming to God's goodness and plan for our lives. We end up seeing unity emerge and evolve in completely new and unexpected ways and in ways that benefit each person in this room. Friends, I am so grateful to each of you with Thanksgiving approaching. Because what you do is a selfless commitment week in and week out to the work that God has already prepared for us and that God is doing among us. 
Friends, we are going to go and we are going to celebrate and we are going to eat well and we're going to give thanks for what is coming because we know that through God all things truly are possible. May it be so. And all thanks be to God both now and forever. Amen. I invite you to please rise as you are able. We're going to briefly touch on that image for the day. It reminds us of the gift of music, the gift of unity, the gift of joy. And today, let us affirm our faith as God's people as found on the screen. The Spirit renews our hearts and moves us to faith, leads us into truth, and helps us to pray, stands by us in our need, and makes our obedience fresh and vibrant. Sent by the Spirit, the church is sent into the world, ambassadors of God's peace, announcing forgiveness and reconciliation, proclaiming the good news of grace. Men and women, impelled by the Spirit, go next door and far away, into science and art, media and marketplace, every area of life pointing to the reign of God with what they do and say. During our closing hymn today, we invite you to come forward as you feel so moved with your pledge card in hand and distribute it in the basket here before returning to your seats again. If you do not have a pledge card and wish to contribute to this campaign, you can pick one up over in the fellowship hall during our stewardship brunch. By way of introduction, our closing hymn, Take My Life, was written in 1874 by Francis Ridley Havergal. According to Havergal, this hymn is a, quote, prayer that God would draw us closer to God's self and use us to bring others to the Lord. God calls us to a life of discipleship and leads us to affirm, here I am, send me. Let us reflect on how we can offer ourselves to God today and in the days to come. Please remain standing in body or in spirit and let us sing.
at the congregations that I have served just prior to a meal being served among the congregation. I'm shaking hands in the receiving line and people are pulling at me. Hey, people are getting restless. Come say the prayer, minister. Why don't I offer a prayer right now, not only for the consecration of our pledges, but also for the meal that we are about to enjoy. Please bow your heads with me and let us pray. We thank you, O God, for the gifts of our lives and for the endless blessings that you have showered upon us. Receive, we pray, the offerings of our hearts, minds, and hands for your glory. We are grateful this day for the many blessings showered upon our community in the form of the sustenance that we need for this day. We thank you for providing for all of our needs and for the many hands and hearts that have gone into preparing this meal for us today. We ask that you would bless it so that we might truly be your body now and forevermore. Amen. A reminder again of our question for the day. What is the benefit of speaking directly to one another as God's people? And finally, I invite you to hear and receive this charge and benediction. Hold fast to what is good. Repay no one evil for evil. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. And may Almighty God teach you and lead you the one who creates all good, redeem you from all evil. The one who hears all prayers, be with you in all people, in suffering and in hope. Alleluia and amen.